This sweet slice of sweetness is the Tiny 2, which I've been using as a secondary camera around the studio for the last few months, and it's been blowing my socks back, not only for the price, the performance, but as the name implies, it's small. What towers over it is this mammoth brute, the tail air, which takes everything I liked about Obsbot's previous webcams and turns the dial to 11. This thing does a little bit of everything. It has an internal battery, SD card reader, and Bluetooth connection to a pretty damn good cell phone application, so you can use it on the go no PC required, but you can use it like a typical USB webcam and it has an HDMI port so you can plug it to the back of something like an Elgato cam link and save yourself a USB port. On top of this, it has phenomenal low light performance, not only for a webcam, but any camera for that matter. And the AI tracking, it's really not comparable to anything else I've seen on the market. If it sounds like I'm really massaging the back and the feet and other places of this webcam, I like it a whole hell of a lot. Full disclosure, Obsbot did send this camera out for a comprehensive review, but I I haven't been paid a dime or told to say anything about it. They don't get to see a private preview of this video. And everything you're about to witness from the unboxing to the setup to the final verdict is my honest thoughts. Let's get it. As for the packaging and included accessories on the Obsbot Tail Air, we are going to bust the biscuits out of the box of the remote in just a second, but I want to make gravy with the actual primary camera. If you're not hungry by now, you should be. Top of the box opens up with a good amount of suction, and you will be greeted by the slogan, Mastermind on Air. This is going to have your documentation, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. And the only thing in the box is going to be this included carrying case, which is identical to the previous Obsbot webcam, which I have reviewed. A cheaper model, but also had this premium carrying case, which provides a good amount of protection and is actually pretty hard. You also have this fabric strap if you want to attach this to your backpack to let people know to rob you. As for a warranty in North America, you are going to have 12 months or a year of coverage. I'd like to see a little bit mo, a longer periodic term, considering this is a freakishly expensive webcam. Cost about a PlayStation 5. First thing you're going to be greeted with in that quick start guide is two QR codes, and one of them is going to be a tutorial video which will walk you through the setup. If you do want to use the mobile-based features of this webcam, you are going to want to install Obsbot Start app, which is available for Android and iOS. Me personally, I am just going to be still sticking to the, well, gimbal got a little kooky on me for a minute, the Obsbot application, which you can see I have pinned down to the taskbar for easy access. Now the font is relatively small in this manual, so if you don't have the eyes of an eagle, you are gonna be squinting, but one thing I do like on the second page is going to be this proper parts breakout, which shows you where to slide your SD card if you are gonna be using one. Also, useful. Damn, useful as well. That's important info too. <laughs> then we run into a bit of a brick wall because page eight starts the next language. So that's right, your English instructions gonna be from page one to page seven. Important note about the charging, make sure you use a proper cable and brick that is FCC CE certified. Included accessory wise, it is pretty bare bones. Inside this little side flap, you are gonna have a USB-C to A adapter, then you are gonna have a USB-C to dual C splitter, and a very short three foot rubberized USB-C to C cable, but this is high speed, and this is what you're gonna use for not only powering the sucker, but also video output. As for the ports, pins, plugs, and connectors, let's start with this lens because it is absolutely Absolutely no slouch. We're talking about a 25 millimeter f 1.8 stop tech specs popping up on screen because this is no slouch of a lens. And in comparison to almost every other webcam on the market, even the high end joints, this is going to give you phenomenal low light performance, which is pretty important if you're using this gaming, editing, or doing anything at a PC where you don't want lights blaring into your corneas. It'll also pick up the subtle glow of your streamer lights pretty damn well too. Beneath the lens is going to be this large LED strip, which is a status indicator. Below that, that is going to be four dibbly dots, which is your battery indicator lights. These two dots off to the side, that one and that one is going to be your front facing microphones. And while the microphones aren't terrible inside this plastic body, I would never advise using the built in microphones of a camera. Same thing as I wouldn't recommend using the speakers built in your TV or laptop. Go ahead and get yourself a headset or a sound bar. You're going to get a much better audio experience, just like you're going to pick up much better audio through an actual dedicated microphone. Eh? Got Latin on you for a second versus the built in Johns. Who's John? On. We don't know. Let's keep moving. On the side, you are going to have the Micro Brothers, a slot for a micro SD card slot for onboard storage, and a micro HDMI port. These vents on the Fannie Mac rump are indeed exhaust vents. This is the power button, and also important for getting power is the USB-C port, which not only does power, but also video out. This 3.5 millimeter port on the side is going to be an audio out. The bottom is going to have quarter inch standardized threading for mounting the sucker, and then you are going to have the pads for the extension pin interface. And back here, you can see you have a little place to get your 
fingernail in there and pop off that shroud or cover and you do have wireless module slot. As for the remote, the cord is cabled around the outside with a little Velcro tie back that does stay connected and then the actual remote itself is in the center of this plastic tray which is some very, very cheap, shitty feeling plastic but I'm sure it's eco-friendly to take this route. You'd have a three foot rubber USB-C cable and then the actual remote receptacle itself which is an ethernet port and a USB-C port. Also, this is all metal housing, feels pretty goddamn durable and also looks slick too with this flat matte black and minimal branding. Kind of wish the Obspot text was a little bit darker gray, almost blacked out. While this is a cool additional accessory, I'm gonna say the same thing I said unboxing the remote for the Obspot Tiny 2. It's a cool accessory, but you really don't need it because Obspot makes their webcam so user-friendly with the software and also just what you can do on the fly that you don't really need this additional accessory. Kind of shot themselves in the foot, but not really. I'm sure there are some people that will pick this up. They're both linked in the description below. Holy moly, and to give you a little bit of a size comparison, this is the Tails Air, and this Paquito slice of sexiness is the Tiny 2 from Obsbot, which I have reviewed on the channel previously. Just completely engulfs or covers its little brother. Little peely sticker. Protecting a very stout 25 millimeter f1.8 stop lens. Are you jealous inside that housing? Hmm? This is another beastly camera, comrade. Couple of quick notes, since that thing is so big, it's such a mammoth body or housing for the camera, it's actually too tall to fit in the little bookshelf crevice or crevasse that I had my Tiny2 webcam in. So I just have the tails there sitting on my desk right now at a very low angle, kind of staring up at my nostrils and my multiple chins. So not a very flattering angle and not where I'm gonna be keeping that camera permanently, but it's where it sits for now now so we can do a couple of demonstrations such as the tracking, gesture controls, beauty modes, and things like that. Also another note, this webcam isn't directly plug and play, at least not in OBS. If you select from this drop down, you're not going to see the Tails Air, and that's because you need a little piece of software for that initial setup. So this is unlike the Tiny 2, which was a plug and play webcam, you didn't even need to install the optional Obspot webcam application, which adds a bunch of cool new features and things you can do with that camera, but you don't need it to get up and running. This camera, you do need a piece of software. And until you install that, there's going to be a purple LED indicator letting you know, uh, I'm kind of confused right now. I can't record you yet. We're going hard with the hardware, but now we need to not go soft, but we need to go to the download page and download the software, which is going to be the Obspot Tail Air, the highest and most expensive flagship webcam from Obspot. Yes, please click it. Oh boy. Hey, big boy. Hey, how you doing? This is a treat. As I'm doing the review, I am learning that the application that I have installed, pinned down here for easy access, that I use pretty much daily, is now uh, updated. Has been as of 13 days ago. It's been replaced with Obspot Center, which I will be installing. But this is the start application, which is going to be for the mobile platforms, Android, Apple, uh, Google Play, for the Google phones. So me being the guy trying to always avoid installing a mobile phone application, thinking it's going to be some kind of spyware or just some shit that I don't need installed on my phone, extra icons on the homepage or whatnot, kind of shooting myself on the foot because that's the easiest way to set up this webcam. You'll see my webcam and I can start live streaming via Wi-Fi or cellular data. I'm currently at 35% battery life, although I am plugged in and you should see that from that Harry Potter lightning bolt icon. If your camera isn't automatically found, you can swipe to the right and rescan. And if you have multiple Obsbot cameras, that'll work as well. You may be tempted to click down there at the bottom where it says explore. Maybe you want to go on an adventure, but don't do it because it takes you to an abyss of nothingness, a black screen you'll be staring at indefinitely. And the only way to get out of this is to just close the application. <gasps> Recording directly off the Tails Air standalone, unplugged from the PC, this is connected cellularly directly to my phone, so if the connection's choppy, that's probably why, although it does look pretty damn smooth. This is at 1080p60, although you can go to 4K30, and there's a couple of limitations in the software that I want to show you right now, and it was pretty difficult to get up and running, and that is because the firmware update has to be done via cellular, and you need to install an SD card. However, something I learned, a little treat for you, is that you can actually format the SD card in the Obspot software. You don't have to pop it out, plug it into your PC and format it that way. That's what I thought. But even still, it was kind of a process to get up and running. And it really does depend what you're trying to do with this webcam, because there's four or five different uses for it. You could use it as a standalone. You could use it as a webcam. You could use it as a tracking cam. And for each one of those uses, you're probably going to set it up a different way. However, just to get up and running, you are going to need to do the firmware update. And in order to do that, you're going to click on these different 
squiggly dots in the lower left hand corner. Scroll all the way down to SD card. Go ahead and format this here. You will get a notification if the SD card that you install is too slow, too old, too janky, too busted. There were two or three different notifications I got telling me to upgrade my SD card until finally I had a winner. Update that here. You can see the capacity. Since I'm not recording, I don't really care about the capacity. I was just installing the SD card to do the update. And right here on this screen, you will see a little update option. Hit that. And it has to be done via the cellular connection. Wi-Fi won't work. Now at the top, you are going to see some gesture controls. You're going to see quite a few, actually. The five palm is going to be to select target, giving him that old 90s, hey, look at what I got here. And then you slug him in the shoulder. Uh, that is going to start and stop recording. L for love, which is going to do zoom. L for love. Dynamic zoom. You do have your audio settings here. I am actually using a, as you see attached to my phone, a little DJI lavalier mic, wireless joint. Video on that in the near future, perhaps. Oh, I got a little silver play button floating above my noggin. Camera options autofocus. Yes, I would like it. Uh, face auto exposure. Yes. Generally, I would leave that ticked because a webcam, I want it plug and play where it does pretty much all the settings for me. I can just get up and running, hit play, start recording. Turning it off, I actually seem to get better image quality out of it. You do also have your ISO upper and lower limits here, but keep in mind if you have auto mode, that won't really matter. Now in output, click on media settings. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Now in output, click on media settings, and that is where you are going to have your frame rate. The maximum for 4K is going to be 30 frames per second but if you bump the resolution down to 1080p, you can stretch all the way out to 60 frames. Bam, kind of crops in a little bit too digitally when you change resolutions like that. The encoder out of the box was H.264. I did change it to Hevik or H.265. Bitrate was high by default. It's where I'm leaving it. And then for HDMI output, if you were going to use the HDMI port on the webcam and then plug it into the back of something like an Elgato face cam, or I've got the internal joint, the face cam pro, which sockets in your motherboard into a PCI slot and lets you have, it's basically four of the face cam sticks in one device. So I can have four HDMI cameras like DSLRs or even GoPros or if shit, anything with an HDMI port, including the tail air over here, which is cool because you wouldn't be using another USB port. You do also have a ton of control here, including the gimbal. You do have the slider for speed. I'm going to put it on its fastest setting. Love that. Slowest setting. Don't love that. I mean, I guess a little cinematic pan. You're going to have your zoom amount on the right side. So when you do activate that via gestures, that is how far in that image will zoom. All of your manual controls that you would expect. A wide auto and face. Good Lord. Damn, this standalone app is impressive. So even if you're not going to be using it how I primarily am going to, routed through my PC via an HDMI cable and that cam link I was talking about earlier, this is phenomenal. If you're just using it with a phone, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of customization here. Praise the Lord. I was genuinely concerned off camera. I was struggling pretty hardcore to get this bad boy up and running with the software on the PC side of the house. You saw me do the demo a second ago with the phone standalone, I, I, I guess standalone, right? Connected to your phone via Bluetooth. But now that I'm tethered to the PC, I'm finally up and running. And the key to that is doing that initial firmware update. And in order to do that, this isn't explained anywhere at all. I had to find it via YouTube, of course, and the video that I found very helpful gentlemen that, that's going to be linked in the description below. That's what got me up and running. I followed it step by step. But the key here is you do need to have an SD card. And even if you get this message saying it's too slow, you can still install the update with that message. It's just recommended for according that you have a higher spec card. But this application is identical to what I've been using with the Tiny 2, and it is phenomenal. This is why I recommend you don't even buy the remote. The additional remote is because the software suite has all of that customization there, including your starting position with the gimbal. There's a couple of pros and cons to this application. I'm about to fully walk you through the software suite. I'm going to go ahead and just acknowledge this warning because we've already covered that we're not going to be recording onto the SD card. It was just to do that initial update. So I can actually remove the SD card now. So I'd be getting a new pop up saying, hey, no SD card installed. What I'm about to tell you is the most valuable piece of information for this webcam that I haven't found in any other YouTube videos. Definitely not the instruction manual. So listen good and listen here. Uh, it's not that serious. Well, it kind of is if you want to use this thing as a plug and play webcam, which I'm assuming a lot of you do, meaning you just plug it in with the USB-C cable and it is recognized in things like Zoom and Discord and OBS. If you don't want to take the HDMI port route and you do not want to connect wirelessly through either cellular or the Wi-Fi network, they were great, but 
Why not just record through a cable, you know? Unless you're on the go, of course. In the application, which you'll be able to use after doing that firmware update, click on the More tab and then come down to Output. Expand it. You will see UVC mode. Click this on. You'll get a little box pop up. It'll cut off all these modes, but then allow it to be used as a plug and play webcam, a USB webcam. What I really don't like about this application, you cannot full screen it. You cannot pinch the sides and resize. Well, you can resize to, to this size. That's about it. So that makes browsing, navigating it a little bit of pain in the wiener schnitzel. What I do like is if you have multiple Bobspot cameras, like I do, I got the Tiny 2 and the Tail Air, you have a little drop down here. If they're both connected or you have several connected, click on this little cog icon in the top. You have your language settings, recording bitrate. You can click the high. You'll get a warning message. I like to say, hey, don't warn me again. It's letting you know this is going to require some high computing performance. It may cause video stuttering. If that happens, then disable it. If it doesn't, you're enjoying a high bitrate. Video recording format. This is awesome that they have all these options. MKV, which is very popular in programs like OBS and editing software like DaVinci Resolve. And you, of course, get your MP4, your MOV, your common containers. Have your file location within your PC. And then over here in global hotkeys, if you want to kind of stream deck it, so to speak, and just have a bunch of hotkeys on maybe the number pad on your keyboard, if you have a full size keyboard that is with a number pad, you can set up some hotkeys here and just switch between different modes, different beauty modes, different angles, zoom in, zoom out, auto track, things like that. Over here in this more tab, you're going to see a bunch of power saving features, such as how long do you want the camera to stay on before she goes to sleep. Doesn't really matter if you're tethered, plugged into your PC, but if you're using it as a standalone wirelessly, hell yeah, that matters. Battery life popping up on screen right here. Charge time and time to drain the sucker. Gesture controls we covered on the mobile app. Probably not going to use the microphone, but if you want to, you can engage it here and then adjust the gain of how hot you are on that mic. You're, I mean, you're going to sound hot regardless, sweetheart, but how loud do you sound? And it also has a software noise gate as well that you can completely disable. This is one of the most important settings, and that is initial state. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a visual representation of what the hell we're looking at. To do that, click on this video preview. It's telling me, hey, man, you got this thing pulled up in OBS. Yes, which I do, but I just disabled the preview, so that should help it out a whole heck of a lot. Just smoothed everything out because this camera was capturing to two places, uh, Open Broadcaster software and the OBSBOT software. Now, this window, you can full screen. You can also pinch and resize. Love to see that. You can also change your video format on the fly. Let's go 4K30. Bam. Now, as you can see, it's basically staring right at my titty nips, and I want you staring at my double chins. So let's go ahead and click on initial state. This is going to be our gimbal control. Let's go ahead and pop it up a little bit. Nope, too much. Beautiful. Now, keep in mind, this is a very low angle where the camera's mounted. We're just kind of working with what we got right now. And you also have your initial zoom state. So if you want to start zoomed in, holy moly. And then if you get confused along the way, you can zero everything out. I'm not going to worry about this because this is actually not going to be the position that the camera's mounted. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're, now we're talking. We're cooking with the grease now. In your general settings, you will be able to turn off the status light as well as the buzzer, which is indeed... <laughs> Thank you, Coach Buzzer, for demonstrating the noise that they're going to hear whenever it turns on and off. In all reality, it's a little chime or chirp, a little mechanical beep, bop, boop, boop. I'm just going to turn it off. By default, the brightness is at five, which I thought was a little overwhelming for my corneas, so I tapered it back. You can format the SD card in the application here, as well as the phone application, so that's sick, and it shows your capacity here. You fucked up along the way. Go ahead and restore your factory settings right here. Firmware version, it shows it to you, and if there's an update available, you should <laughs> have an option right here. Here, a little box you can click. There it is right down there. Manual update. But she's telling me the camera battery needs to be at 25 or plugged in. Holy shit. OK, that works really good. So much like NVIDIA broadcast, which I used to use back in the day before I got into mirrorless and DSLR cameras and I was still using a plug and play webcam. What you're going to do is use the software program to blur the background. Shit, it does a really good job, as you can see. That looks awesome. I'm crisp and in focus. Gives that nice bokeh or depth of field. I might just leave that on for the rest of the video. You can adjust the blur level with a slider here. Default is three. Eight is looks like trash. So yeah, three is perfect. I'm not going to mess with any of these settings, but they do indeed work. They try and target a face, a human face, frame it, and then allow you to use these beauty settings. But we will look at some filters real quick. But before we do, let's crank the level to 100 so we can fully enjoy the effect that they're going to give us, which are pretty mild on some of these. Now over here in image, this is a very important tab because this is going to be your typical camera settings autofocus. I am going to leave that engaged. And what's important is you can leave this global. So it's going to be the entire everything that's captured on the camera or just your face. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Exposure settings. I'm going to leave it at auto anti 
high flickers. So if I were to have my screen on, this thing would be flickering no matter what I do, but engaging 60 hertz could potentially cut out a flickering screen that's also at 60 hertz. Ugh, auto is the only one that looks good here for sure. And then over here in console, it is going to give you your camera's battery life. This bad boy is charging, although it does seem like it's either trickle charging or still losing battery life, uh, which is crazy. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. You saw it right there. I cannot record directly to this application. Not that I ever would. I would just be recording through OBS. You have your tracking modes over here, which we are about to engage tracking right now. I believe this is tracking. There it is. That's the one. So right now this is standard. It's kind of slow in my opinion, but now we cranked it up to fast. Oh yeah. Oh, that's almost too fast. That's, that's a jarring. Let's put it back to standard. Verticality. earning a paycheck today. Now, if you just want to focus on your upper half, you can do that. And if you want to focus on your better half, there is no option to focus on the torso and below, but you can get ready for your close-up, Mr. DeVille. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. They also have some new AI modes that were not with the Tiny 2, such as animal tracking. So that's cool because I have a dog. And then if you want to manually control your gimbal and your zoom level, you can do that right here. The software suite's going to get a 7 out of 10. It'd be higher if I could pinch and zoom and resize. And also, I've had a little bit of jank when it comes to getting up and running. But once you're up and running, this camera is just muy caliente. As for the pros, cons, and verdict of the tail air, which is staring up currently at my Elgato prompter, which I just got delivered recently and is a really cool piece of tech, even for somebody like myself that doesn't script their videos or read off of a traditional teleprompter. It does a lot of other cool shit. Yes, I can also keep my notes on there so I don't keep looking off and stuff like that. Uh, the tail air, which is continuing to stare up at my camera currently, it's in sleepy sleep mode, is probably the most versatile camera that I've ever seen. And at this price point, it offers quite a bit. You can record at 4K30 with some killer AI tracking and really good low light performance, not just for a webcam, but any camera that you're recording indoors. The fact you can use this on the go with the cellular app, which is actually really good and has the majority of the features of the PC version, and just set this thing on a tree or on a rock or at a park or somewhere if you're a content creator and you're vlogging out in the go and it'll track your ass very accurately and your dog. It has a AI dog tracking mode now. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. It also has an SD card slot so you can record directly onto this bad boy and not have to lug a laptop around. But speaking of computer connections, if you don't want to use an additional USB port, you can actually use the HDMI out and plug into the back of something like an Elgato face cam or any kind of adapter to use a full size camera. Every scenario that I could think of using this bad boy in. God damn it, it is still staring up at the ceiling. You. Yep. Just took manual control of the gimbal. There you are. Hi. Good morning. Everything I could possibly want to do on this little camera, I can do. As for the cons, shortcomings or limitations, it's heavy. It's expensive. The software is kind of a bitch to get up and running. In fact, if you want it to work as a plug and play webcam, it's a big pain in the wiener schnitzel. If that's all you want to, to use it as is just a straight up plug and play webcam, I would advise looking at the Tiny 2. It's substantially cheaper. Still has a killer gimbal system with the AI motion tracking where it can track your ass very well. Not your rump, but your face. It has a lot of the same features as the tail here for about half the price. Low light performance isn't as good, so you're going to need to supplement with some lights but that's to be expected with update uh, shit, any webcam. But if you want a camera that can do a little bit of everything, including just being able to set up on a park bench and use internal battery and record right to an SD card, yes, this is a killer camera. If you don't want to kill yourself in the setup process, once you're up and running, she is smooth sailing and will do everything you want this camera to do. Wish the warranty was longer than a year. Three years would be nice. This is a, a very expensive piece of gear. Another con, this gets very warm to the touch. Can't light a cigarette off it or cook eggs or anything but it does get quite warm to the touch. Even when it's just sitting there idle, not doing shit, the gimbal hasn't been looking around, I haven't been recording, it's just sitting on my desk in standby mode. I touch it, it's warm. That's weird. The next one, it is large and bulky and also very tall. So where I had my tiny two cam sitting previously, kind of wedged in between a crevice on my bookshelf is an impossible place for this to sit. And then I think there's a lot of little nooks and crannies that 
creators would want to put a webcam and you you can't with this thing along those lines this is not the kind of webcam you want to just attach to the top of a monitor like a typical clamp on webcam but the tiny 2 fits that bill to a t and fits damn near any setup because it's kind of well tiny like the name implies but not tiny in features the quality is bomb on that one the gimbal is incredibly smooth there's no jitter or weird motion it's also very fast to track especially when you put it in fast mode it's pretty jarring how quick it moves and the you're not going to fool this thing with the tracking. You're not going to be able to juke it out, snap the ankles or anything. It's going to keep up with you. It is linked in the description below alongside an exclusive discount for my audience. Drop in the comment section below what you're using to record. If you're a recording make a recorder, if you're somebody that records things, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.